From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. Today we're going to be focusing on some things of which we're all aware. Of course, this first one has to do with uh, something that uh, we read about all the time right now. This summer, the West bakes under heat wave as mercury sets records. Had a lot of records set out there. And flying car design hits new heights. Did you know that we have flying cars? I didn't realize that until Jack gave me some research on it. And this one. Has America turned her back on God? We certainly need to focus on that one, don't we? But before we get into any of these, Jack always has some humor for us. And this first one has to do with somebody who broke into a house and the lady had a gun. Okay, Jack, can you please give us some jokes? Well, she was a little lady in her 80s, and she believed in packing the heat. And these guys broke in, and somebody saw them going into her house, so they immediately called the police. And when they said, this is a stick-up, we're going to take everything you've got, she ran out and said, repent, Acts 238. And they fled out the door, and the police were there already and grabbed them. And they said, how come you guys are so afraid of a little lady in her 80s? Because she said she had an axe in 238 <laughs> and said, repent. <laughs> oh, man. You say, you think this is a wise thing, even for a Christian? Yes. Because Jesus said in Luke 22, 36, if you don't have a sword to protect yourself, sell your clothes and buy one. And believe me. We're ready. Well, that little lady quoting the Bible from the book of Acts really worked. Amen. <laughs> we need to quote the Bible. Well, friends, it has been unusually hot, not just here in the United States, but around the world, as a staggering heat wave set records here and abroad. Take a look. Heat reaches triple digits, strains, power grids. And the West Bank's under heat wave as mercury sets records. Once again, June shoots up the mercury and tide as planet's fifth hottest. Whoa, since they've been keeping record, this is the fifth hottest record. All right, now we're going to be focusing on some of the things that have been happening around the world. And this first one I think is very, very important. And it is in the Bible. Jack, uh, this is a sign that says the Lord is coming very soon, isn't it? Oh, Rexella, we're dealing with the book of Daniel the next few weeks. And you know, Daniel tells us everything we need to know about our future, whether we're Jews, Gentiles, or Christians. What? Yes. Now, in chapter 12, verse 1, Daniel says, There shall be a time of trouble, that's in America and the world, such as never was since there was a nation. And Jesus picked up on that in Matthew 24, verses 21 and 22. He said, For then shall be great tribulations, such as never was since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be again. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, they shall be shortened. The elect, of course, are his people, Jews and Christians and those who know the Lord. Now, Rexella, there's a problem here. God cannot shorten the days because he's promised that the tribulation hour of a seven-year length, Revelation 6 to 18, will last 2,520 days. So he can't say it's only going to be 2,512. No. Well, then there's something else. Yes. You see, we find in Revelation 11.3 and 12.6 that one half of the tribulation period is 1,260 days. Double that, that's 2,520 days. So how do we get out of this mess? When we get to Revelation 16, verses 8 and 9, it talks about a tremendous earthquake. It said, 
the fourth angel poured out his bowl of judgment upon the sun, S-U-N, and power was given unto the sun to scorch men with great heat. I mean, they're going to have blisters in those days. God, in his love to protect his elect, sends something to send clouds and dust in the moon's direction and sun in order that people might live because the heat is unbearable. They are scorched by the fire. Read it in Revelation chapter 16, verses 8 and 9. Here's what happens. God sends this earthquake. Revelation 6, 12, I beheld when he opened the sixth seal, and there was a great shaking. And that is that earthquake. And as Carl Sagan, who's now deceased, said, there's an hour coming when there'll be a shake in this world that will throw up the mist and the dust and everything imaginable. And for 60 days, there'll be a blockage from the rays of the sun. Wow, this is the secular world speaking. Now, when does that happen? Toward the end of the seven-year period of tribulation. How do I know? And that, of course, is Matthew 24, 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. Darkness to save the people upon the face of the earth. But this is even more exciting. In the midst of all of that darkness, that's one of the last signs for Jesus appears. In that same chapter, 24, verse 27, as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. He comes to set up his kingdom, and from then on there's going to be peace because he's the Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, 6. And they're going to beat their swords and the plowshares, their spears and the pruning hooks. It's going to be over because the Lord Jesus Christ has come to put a stop to war and the killing of one another. And that, of course, is Revelation 11:18. Ooh, it's so wonderful, isn't it, that the Lord protects us. Amen. Oh, how what a loving God we have. Now, here is a huge innovation, friends, to go from horse and carriages. Now, the Amish people still have that. But going to cars and then beyond. Take a look. Horse and carriages to driverless cars. Driverless cars, I can't believe it, Jack. That is amazing. Oh, I'm full of humor today. I heard about an Amishman who had his buggy and the horse was pulling it and he had a sign on the back. He said, be careful not to step in the exhaust. <laughs> Your shoes will get dirty. <laughs> oh, brother, <laughs> what a day to be alive. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad we went farther, aren't you? <laughs> now, we had a car show here in Detroit. I'd like for you to take a look at the car show. 1904 Curve Dash Oldsmobile Runabout Model 6 Dash C. Now the gentleman that you see on the right on the top there is Mr. Ronald Pewey. He's a member of our board here at Jack Benneby Ministries and he and his wife Melissa, you see his beautiful wife on the left there, received a plaque because of owning this Oldsmobile. Whoa, that goes way back, 1904. And then going on, her car is 82, she's 102, both still going strong. Can you believe that one? Her car, 82. I want to clarify yeah, yes, something. Yeah. That is not Melissa, 102. She's younger than that. Ron looks like he could be that age, but not <laughs> Melissa. Let's keep going. <laughs> yes, we will. We'll go on here with, with the Buick. And that has to do with Buick turns 110. 11 highlights of 11 decades. My oh my, recounting the biggest, the fastest, and most significant from Buick history. Now we'll go on here. Flying car design hits new heights. Can you believe that on the right? A flying car. And then, cars that talk to each other cruise in test drive. I can't believe that they can actually, uh, actually be understood like that. And here's another great innovation, and it has to do with world travel. We're going to go to Jack and ask him again, just how important is it that all these scientific developments have happened? Does it really point to the coming of the Lord from going from horseless carriages to the airplane? We've been talking about Daniel. Now in chapter 12, verse 4, God speaks to him, and he says, Daniel, Shut the book. Seal it. 
until the time of the end. And how shall one know when the end time has arrived? He goes on to explain, many shall run to and fro, travel and knowledge shall be increased. And right now, every 22 months, the knowledge and facts of the world double. It used to take 1,800 years to double the first time, and now every 22 months. But let's get back to the cars and planes. Man, if you don't believe the coming of the Lord is near, you've missed it. Nahum chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. The chariots shall be with flaming torches in the day of his preparation. The chariots shall rage in the streets. They shall jostle one against another in broadways, accidents. They shall seem like torches, headlights, and taillights, and they shall run like lightning. It's arrived. But what did he say in the day of Messiah's preparation, in the day when the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come back and set up his kingdom in Revelation 19, 11, when he comes on that white horse? And he comes as the King of the kings and Lord of the lords, verse 16, to rule and reign for a thousand years and then to be recommissioned, 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 28, and then to rule on this earth forever and forever because the world's never going to end. And when Daniel talks about the end, he doesn't mean the end of the world. He means the end of the church age before the kingdom begins. And I'll prove all that just a little bit later. The Bible plainly says that it's a world without end, Isaiah 45, 17, and Ephesians 3, 21, and Daniel agreed, for he said there's a world government coming, and when it comes, there'll be ten divisions, as we're going to show you next week, but get this now, and out of that group will come a dictator, and get this, oh, this is exciting now, in the days of these ten kings, and we're going to show you that it's all here now, shall the Lord God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never, never be destroyed, it shall stand forever. How long? Forever? Forever? So he wasn't teaching the end of the world. He was teaching the end of the church age. When we're raptured, come up hither. And then seven years later, return with him. Mm. You know, Jack, today, I was talking to people about some of the things going on in the world. We're going to be going on to financial disaster globally in just a moment. But I said, you know what? It all comes out to something that's good. I'm so glad that we have a blessed, blessed hope. And now, friends, I just want to talk a little bit about the, the offer that we have. And it's entitled, Whoa, Awake America 2020. And we need to wake up, don't we, friends? We need to be ready for the coming of the Lord. I'm trusting that you'll write for the video. Awake America. There's so much that we're going to be dealing with. We're going to be dealing with the stress that people are going through, what it results in. We're going to be dealing with a war in the Middle East that's coming very, very soon. Very important. So please write. I'll be happy to send you Awake America 2020. Now here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. Oh, my friend, to order. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now, once again, here's Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck, and I want to encourage you right and get that. Awake America 2020. Now, friends, we're going to, as I said, be talking about financial disaster globally, globally. And the first one, the disaster that we want to uh, really focus on, really hit Jack's heart because he grew up in Detroit. Take a look at this first headline, Detroit's Reckoning, City Files Largest Municipal Bankruptcy in History. The Motor City goes bust. And Detroit, not alone with debts built on promises. Now, many cities are buried under pension burden. Now, here's a comparison of the cities. 
And uh, they, of course, uh, are very, very detailed here, but I'm just going to name them Detroit, Chicago, Los Angeles, and Baltimore. Going on, economic woes abroad bode ill for the United States. You know why? The renewed fears of a global slowdown come after months of hope that a stronger recovery was finally taking shape. We were banking on that. European banks are stung by Detroit's financial woes because European banks bought a total of one billion of Detroit bonds. And a new twist in Argentina's bid to dodge its debts. Now, they were hoping that the International Monetary Fund would help them, but no way. We are in trouble, friends, worldwide financially. Economic disaster. Pointing to the coming of the Lord, Jack? Rexella, let me first of all, before I answer your question, say I grew up in Detroit. My parents came from Belgium, and they were immigrant laborers picking beets. And they had it so hard. But then they moved to Detroit, and I grew up there until I was 21 years of age and loved it. And I'm a graduate of Denby High School. Yeah, some of you wondered about me. And guess who sat in front of me? You know Art Van Furniture Store? I never knew that his name was Art Van Elslander because he just used Art Van. And of course, he and I are both Belgians. And one day when I saw it recently, it was Van Elslander, two 16-year-old boys were sitting in high school. And he always sat in front of me because Elslander preceded the I, Impey. Van Elslander, Van Impey. Pretty good for two Belgian boys, huh? Amen. Now, let me get into the problem that's coming. Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 7, Mark 13, and Luke 21, 11, that there would be hunger, famine, starvation. Why? James 5 begins to tell the story, verses 1 to 4. He says, Go to now, you rich men. Weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. You have heaped treasure together for the last day. And oh, we're rejoicing. But he says it's all coming to nothing. And so they're weeping and wailing in James chapter 4 because they're losing it. And then Revelation 18 picks up on it. Verses 10 and 17 and 19. Verse 10, for one hour is thy judgment come. Verse 17, in one hour have all her riches come to nothing globally. Verse 19, in one hour is she made desolate. It gets so bad that even in Ezekiel 7, 19, they're casting meaningless silver into the streets and their gold is being confiscated. And that horseman in chapter 6 of Revelation, the third rider of the apocalypse, cries out, a measure of wheat for a penny, a measure of wheat for a penny. A measure with 16 ounces, a penny a day's wages. Dangerous days ahead, according to Daniel. Mm. Jack, we promised that we would deal with something that's very, very disturbing to my heart. So much is happening to give evidence that the United States to, seems to be turning our hearts away from God and from our Savior. Jesus Christ, take a look here. Franklin Graham, we have turned our backs on God. And here, take a look, no pray zone. How the U.S. military is fighting religious liberty. Does that not break your heart? They're telling them they can't do it. And going on, Pentagon taps anti-Christian extremists for religious tolerance policy. Now this is what Mr. Weinstein had to say today. We face incredibly well-funded gangs of fundamentalist Christian monsters who terrorize their fellow Americans by forcing their weaponized and twisted version of Christianity upon their helpless subordinates in our nation's armed forces. Oh, Mr. Weinstein, you are so wrong. And then going on, chaplains are pursuing their mission in a military suddenly hostile to Christianity and ready to suppress religious freedom. Now, this is such a very, very powerful article. If we put that on the screen, I would love for Jack to read what it has to say, please. This year, an Idaho Air Force base removes a painting called Blessed Are the Peacemakers because it references a Bible verse. My, my. 
Also this year, an Army Reserve training brief on hate groups declares that evangelical Christians and Roman Catholics are extremists as dangerous as Al-Qaeda. Really? Last year, a superior tells an Air Force major to remove from his desk the Bible he had kept there for 23 years. An Army lieutenant, Colonel, instructs his subordinates to recognize the religious right in America as a domestic hate group like the Ku Klux Klan and neo-Nazis. God forgive this blasphemous person. Two years ago, Christian prayers were banned at the veteran funeral services in Houston's National Cemetery. Bibles temporarily banned at Walter Reed Army Medical Center, a Christian cross banned from a military chapel in Afghanistan, a chaplain called into a supervisor's office and chewed out for closing a prayer with the words, in Jesus' name. God forgive us. Our Congress and Senate voted and said we will not allow this. You will be allowed to talk about the Lord. Thank them, all the members of Congress and Senate. And remember, it's all blamed on the Pentagon. Only God knows why. But Jesus said it would happen. He said, you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake, Matthew 24, 9. USA Today just said 130 nations of the world hate Christianity and Christians. It's coming. Oh, this is tender. This is Jesus speaking in John 15, verses 18 to 20. If the world hate you, Remember, it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I've chosen you out of the world, therefore, therefore, the world hates you. Remember, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they're also going to persecute you. And 2 Timothy 3.12 says, All who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer this kind of persecution like our military men are suffering. And they were even told they could be court-martialed if they talk about Jesus and use his name. Now hear me, folks. It's going to get worse. Revelation 6, 9, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. And in Revelation 20, verse 4, they're being beheaded because of their Christian message. Enough said. Oh my, oh my, how we need to be praying for our country, don't we, and for the world. In the beginning of the program, Jack referred to the fact that knowledge would be increased just before the coming of the Lord. What a difference a century can make. Take a look, big data, meet big brother. Oh my, oh my, if computers can now predict our behavior, should governments watch our every move? Oh my, FBI director says surveillance drones used in the United States. New supercomputer could be world's fastest. And China's Tehani, number two, retakes fastest supercomputer crown. In other words, they have gone ahead of everyone. Jack, I believe knowledge is right there. Next week, the New World Order, an Antichrist is going to arise. The world dictator, Revelation 13, 1 is control over all kindred tongues, people, and nations, verse 7, and a religious cohort to help him, verses 11 to 18 of that 13th chapter. Now, let me quickly tell you how he can do it. We now have a computer called Titan, and it can do 20,000 trillion calculations per second. But wait, wow! They say when we do it full speed, we can do 54,000 trillion calculations per second. What does that mean? There's 7 billion of us. They can get 600 pieces of information per second on all 7 billion of us at the same time simultaneously. You think the big brother can't take care of what's coming and what our government's been doing, interviewing and trying to get all of our information and checking out our telephone conversations and now even the mail, where it's being mailed. God help us. This all happens during the seven years of tribulation, but Jesus is coming and we're going to hear, come up here to Revelation 4.1 and we're going to miss all of this mess. Revelation 3.10, I'll keep you out of the hour of testing that comes on the whole world. Amen. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Jack, you've gone right into the good news. That's good news, isn't it? That all the things that we're seeing right now Oh my, from the disaster of trying to wipe out our faith in God, 
to all the innovations that have happened in recent years, the last hundred years, they all point to the coming of the Lord. How wonderful. But are you ready? We need to be ready for the coming of the Lord. We can be ready if you have him in your heart. Have you accepted him as your Savior? Oh, please pray this prayer with Jack as he gives the invitation. Jack. They shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And oh, how he loves you. I don't care what you've done, how often you've done it, how hideous, heinous your sin may appear in your own eyes. The blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin. If you ask him to cleanse you, will you do it? Lord Jesus, Savior of the world, thank you for that precious blood that washes away sin. And mine today, for I'm receiving what you did. Lord Jesus, come in my heart now. Save me. I want to be ready for your return. Amen. Amen. Oh, I trust that you prayed that prayer, the most important prayer of your life. There's my address. Let me know if you did. Will you please? I'll send you this little booklet, absolutely free, for steps in a new direction. Friends, I just want to say the other day someone said, Rexella, my life is falling apart. I want to encourage you with this. Life is fragile. Handle with prayer. We'll look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very, very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>